Let's get to work. Pick you up a copy. Are you a project manager or are you thinking about getting into project management? Imagine a project manager like a symphony conductor. You've seen it where the conducting the orchestra. Are you curious though, like how the essential skills distinguish the good from the exceptional project manager? If that's you, you want to stay tuned. By the way, if you're new to the channel, I go by the name of ED for all you smart and intelligent folks out there. Listen, that just simply means it. Today's episode is entitled Essential Soft Skills for, for Successful Project Manager. Again, Essential Soft Skills for Project Managers. Now, as you know, I have a seven point framework. After these seven points, I'm out. First point, masterful communication. What does that mean, ED? That means being able to craft a clear, concise message to ensure that your, your team is aligned on the objective of the project as well as the task and that we're always working to a understanding, an understanding of resolving uh, issues, an understanding of resolving risk, understanding so basically being a masterful communicator, and this is going to be, you, I, I really truly believe, and I, and I know this is subjective, but I'll say this, family, that you'll never be a masterful uh, communicator. Now, you may think you mastered it, but you, you'll realize you learned something else about a new way of, of communicating. So I always say you can't always say you're a master or a guru, but you can say you're a master and guru in training. I like that. Let's move on to point number two, leadership acumen. Um, if you are a project manager, a program manager, a project coordinator, if you're in this project management uh, sphere or this thing that we love and call project management, you're going to have to de develop your leadership skills. I know, the, I know the job title says project manager, but really you are a project leader because you have to aspire and guide your team through a lot of different challenges that come up. And most of all, creating a collaborative environment in which can produce the required productivity. You know, one of the biggest buzzwords, and I know people say it's a buzzword, but I really truly believe it is that when you have a team that is really collaborating together, the success that project is going to have. It makes it more fun. And, and when I say more fun, meaning it, 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 you just look forward to working with the team because you know something, someone's going to do something funny or crazy, but still you're going to still maintain the sense of focus to ensure that the project does what? It stays on time or, or you know, finishes early on budget or saves money. Um, and it stays within scope and the quality is amazing. That is the iron triangle there for, for those that are paying attention at home. Point number three, my favorite, emotional intelligence. I think I'm going to do a deeper dive on this because emotional intelligence, what does that mean? It means navigating situations. I'll tell you a story real quick, real brief. So how I had to leverage emotional intelligence, uh, I was in a meeting and one, one of the sponsors that I was working with uh, he was frustrated and he had every right to be frustrated. He was frustrated because that he wasn't receiving the proper engagement he thought for the project. And I said, okay, let's, let's step back and see what's going on. As far as let's look at the business case, let's look at our charter. Let's look at all of these artifacts that we've already started creating and why you're not getting the buy-in that you need in order to have this project to be a success. And what he realizes is, is that the reason why is that there were other priorities taking place. So he had to make a decision. Do I still, do we want to keep running this project or do we put this on hold and then we go assist somewhere else so that way we can help speed up that project in which in turn we can get some of those resources to put on the project that he really wanted to do. And that was, that's an, a true example of emotional intelligence because he could have gotten up, upset. He could have gotten frustrated and, and frustrated to a point where he didn't want to do nothing. And I've seen that a lot of times, family, is that we can get so upset, especially if you're passionate like me, uh, when it comes to this thing we love and call project management, because you're trying to, you, you, you're trying to like help this make sense. You get a project approved, you get it started, and then all of a sudden you want to put it on hold. Why? What happened? 
and then you you dig you 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 dig deeper as far as to the root and not the surface and you realize oh something came up that really did take precedence over this particular project so emotional intelligence is really just having the ability to show empathy have the ability to have an understanding and be adaptable when you when you're adaptable oh my I could go days with days for that, but let's move on to point number four. Point number four, effective negotiation. You know, when, when I uh, started doing project management, started doing project management, but when I got introduced to project management, one of the things that I rarely talked about is negotiation. What? I said negotiation. Yes, negotiation. I think ne negotiation is a skillful are one of my favorite books is by Chris Voss and it's called Never Split the Difference. Again, never split the difference for those that are, are um, readers out there. That is an excellent book. And the reason why I think that book is, is, is so good because of just a quick backstory. So Chris uh, Voss, he was a, what you call, I don't want to say, he was a negotiator. So more or less of someone that would come in, let's say it's a hostage situation and he would come in to negotiate to get the hostages out. And one of the things that I really learned from that book is really patience. <laughs> when you're negotiating, you have to have patience. Also, you have to be willing to understand what are you willing to give up? And what are you what are you not willing to give up and understand your values? If there's something that is in the way of your values of what you stand for, and what you believe in, then it makes sense either to move forward or not to move forward. But effective negotiation and project management is going to help you in your personal life as well. I'm going to be honest with you, having to negotiate for resources or having to negotiate for money or or having to resolve conflicts. Uh, is is something that are transferable skill sets, and that's why I'm always excited about when I have an opportunity to leverage my negotiation because it really it really develops you as a project manager because a lot of times these the resources that you're working with do not have a direct line as far as your direct reports, so you're always constantly trying to find new ways to get them excited about here's another project. Let's move on to point number five. Be adaptable in problem solving. Again, be adaptable in problem solving. Having the ability to tackle challenges with a, a more of an agility type mindset, embracing creative problem solving type techniques and stepping, stepping up to, to roadblocks and facing them head on and not do the surface problem solving, but do the root problem solving. What is that, ED? Well, the root problem solving means is that if you ever seen a weed in the ground and if you just cut it and not pull it up by the root, that, that weed will grow back. So that's the same thing with, with uh, when you're, you're facing problems in your, in your project, being able to face them head on and get to the root of the problem is always going to help you uh, put you ahead of your peers. Time management. This is point number six. The reason why this is key for me is I'm guilty of, and I'm actually working on probably like a little mini ebook or something like that that I could put along with the book you love, <laughs> The Magnetic Project Manager. But seriously, no, I am working on, um, I think that's going to be a bo another book I'm going to work on, a little smaller version though. Uh, because there's some things that I've learned about time management that has really is starting to help me more as far as when I'm leading project in my in my person. Because listen, family, not only do I want to help you uh, become a better project manager or uh, from us to learn from each other, but I also want you to be able to take some of these skills that we're, we're talking about here and use it in your personal life as well. And one of the things that I really realized is using that do not disturb on your phone. Oh my goodness, this has helped me so much because if you're like me, it's, it's like a squirrel, like you just, you know, it, a notification come, you're like, oh, I gotta I gotta see this or, or call someone is calling you, oh, I gotta answer it because if I don't answer it, and it's just like that, what's that, what's that cliche FOMO, the fear of missing out. And when you start really, uh, paying attention, you'll be you'll be shocked how much time that you give away that you don't even know that you're giving away. Example: I was watching a video. Uh, they were talking about how Elon Musk does a lot of time blocking, and it, they were saying, and I don't have the research, so I have to go look that up. So I'll just say based on what I I, I saw, 
Um, but I'm going to do the research because, you know, I want to over de uh, deliver and I'll come back to you, family. But what, what they were saying is, is let's say, for instance, someone calls you and is a five minute call and they say, let's say you were working on something. They said it takes you an additional 30 minutes in order to circle back to where you to that same focus that you that level of focus that you have. So right there. And if that call was only five minutes, that's 35 minutes that's going to take you to get recentered. So the ability to find little ways to manage your time effectively. If you're working on your project management plan, block that time off. Hey, schedule a meeting with yourself and block that time off so people won't disturb you so you can stay focused because even even Gary Keller talked about it in the one thing. There's no such thing as multitask. I've tried it many, many times to no avail. I haven't been successful. Maybe you have. Maybe you can tell me something. Leave it in the comments. I'd love to know. Point number seven, conflict resolution. What does that mean? Being able to handle conflicts and addressing issues head on. We kind of talked about that about problem solving, but also when it comes to conflicts, family, because if you continue to let those conflicts um, pester your project, I said pester, I mean, it's, it's really a good word for that due to the fact that if somebody doesn't want to be part of the team, if they don't want to be there, then we have to find something for them to do. And that is, is either get them off their team, get them off the team or um, get them off your team. And, and sometimes you can't get people off your team that's there and, and they may be a menace, but you have to find ways to still use their skill setting and, and get a get a buy in if it, if it gets just that bad family then escalate, escalate to their leadership and, and move forward. I do have a bonus for you, of course, uh, stakeholder management. Listen, being able to cultivate relationships with stakeholders and understanding their needs and most of all expectation, because listen, family, a lot of frustration comes from the expectation that we either believe someone has set beliefs that we that we agreed upon. So if we both said, hey, this is the expectation, you're going to get up every day at 7 a.m., we're going to go work out. And then after we work out, we're going to do some, you know, some training and coaching and you don't show up and you don't show up the next day and the next day. So after day two, I already would have probably, probably after day one, I would have been done. You know, I know you probably would have came with a reason why, but I probably would have, after day two, I'd be realistic and say, you know what, maybe this is not a good uh, fit for us to, to do this. So I'll just go work out on my own and everything because you have to be able to understand that if we set a certain expectation, we need to deliver on that expectation. If the expectation has changed, we need to com communicate that change expectation so we don't uh, create that, that frustration. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Family, it's been your boy ED. Until next time, I'm out.